Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video and in this video, we're going to be talking about top 5 challenges that you're going to be facing when you're working as a profile of machine learning or data scientist. Now these are not the challenges that you're going to be facing while learning the machine learning because that part is already sorted out via my course and obviously there are much more resources as compared to the previous days. If I just tell you a simple example of the previous days, uh, even the installing of the TensorFlow was not at all possible on Windows machine, but that, that days are, those days are completely gone. So let's talk about what are the top five challenges that are still there in machine learning. And I am looking forward for the positive response from the community that eventually they're gonna be solved. So let's talk about them. So the challenge number one is the data. Now this is not at all a challenge for the big companies like Facebook, Google, Amazon and yes you know all about the Facebook thing which is going on right now. So data for these big companies is not at all a challenge but for a beginner even at the learning phase getting up all this data is really a big issue. You don't find such of the big high amount of data and again the authenticity and how much data is relevant is again a big issue. Now any company who is getting started or for a startup bringing up that data is really crucial because the more you're going to be having the data more you can train your model properly and can predict the results on the test data so that your model can actually work uh, really good on the real data. So that's one big issue. Now I know this issue personally because when I was preparing this entire bootcamp for machine learning and data science I, I needed a lot of data. Yes websites like Kaggle and all these helps but sometimes you have to even cook up your own data so that you can present the model and can make sure that people understand what you really want to talk, talk about there. But again, the big issue is that companies, some companies do have data and due to the privacy issues and all these other legal issues, they cannot share this data directly to other people. But yes, this data is helping all those companies to be uh, stand in the front line and leaving all the competitors behind and just learn everything on their own. This is good for them as a business perspective, but this is not good for the community. So yes, uh, we need more data in the world as an open source so that we can more try to more understand what are the things and try to implement more algorithms on them and can predict good results. So data is number one challenge. The second big challenge as a profile when you work on a data scientist or a machine learning expert is unclear question. Now, sometimes we do have data we have mechanism to understand the data but sometimes the questions are so vague and so unclear that it's really hard to understand that what things we should apply to them how we should plot a graph to them now this is not i can understand some of you might not be relating to here but all those people who are working actually into the domain of data science might might be getting with me that yes sometimes the question is too vague from a company and they just want the result but data science doesn't work like that it's moreover of a curve that can give you good hints about taking measurable actions. Uh, but again, this is not at all like it's, it's a common myth that gets all around in the companies that you can get exact results. No, data science works on a little bit different. It doesn't give you exact results. It gives you a pattern on which you can act and can improve the result. It's not, it's not like a magic that is going to happen overnight. So sometimes the question is really vague and it creates a lot of problem for the data scientists to just do anything with that. The third challenge can be a little bit personal for me because when I worked with a couple of clients, uh, it actually is something which I faced. Probably it's just me or probably it might be others as well. And that is unclear representation of the data. Now let's just say we have a data, we have applied certain algorithms to that data, we have done all the cleaning process, then applied some algorithms onto that. And now we want that data to be shown to higher authorities. And obviously we cannot just throw the data in front of them. We need to plot some kind of graphs with them. And yes, we do have libraries like Matplotlib and Seaborn, which does really a good job. But sometimes it's so hard to find out that which graph is gonna be suiting for that data. And even selecting all those, following all those principles which are there in amazing books and all those blogs. Even after that, the data sometimes is so unclear for the representation purposes. So I personally believe that even with the libraries like Matplotlib and Seaborn are there, but still there is a lot of room to make sure that there are good amount of libraries which can make this process easier and can have, uh, can give us some more opportunities to have data which we can present and in a better manner. 
So I hope you are trying to understand what I'm saying here is there is more room for libraries which can make our life easier. I am a big fan of Seaborn library uh, because compared to Matplotlib it's so much easier to understand and for the teaching purposes it's amazing. But again uh, there is a room for much more so that we can have better representation of the data. The fourth problem that I felt uh, with this machine learning and data science is the computational resources. Now I'm not talking about like a few hundred thousand lines of data. I'm talking about millions and millions of lines of data. Now when you compute these kinds of things on any machine and if it is like reinforcement learning, you have to again and again and again compute that kind of data. Now computing that kind of data could be a little bit expensive and can be much more expensive. Now we do have libraries like TensorFlow which can work on CPU or GPUs as well. But you know, you know the inside fact that GPUs are not at all cheap. They are really expensive. And even if you want to do that kind of computation on the cloud, it's really, really expensive. So yes, it's a hardware issue. Nobody can actually do much about it. But I'm, I'm kind of a predicting that eventually with the future as other things are going to progress, these computational resources are going to get cheap and is going to be affordable for everyone. But as of now, one of the biggest challenges is uh, the resources are pretty expensive. I'm not talking about the small scale stuff that everybody does. I'm talking about the big scale stuff like uh, probably making an AI for a game that can beat the game actually. This kind of resource and computational requires a lot of resources. So I'm pretty sure that in the future things are going to change a lot. And this is the one thing that I'm personally looking forward that companies can come up and can provide like a cheaper GPUs or maybe a cloud would be my personal choice. That's something like uh, I can just make an account on a website and can use their resources to compute any data at a cheap price. That would be amazing. Fifth and the biggest challenge that everybody faced regardless they are beginner or an expert which is like really the big one. The selection of algorithm. Now a lot of you might be thinking hey with the expertise it just automatically comes which algorithm to choose for which data but it's not because data is such in a huge quantity and sometimes it's such an unclear data that selection of algorithm is one of the most crucial decision because it's gonna flow up the entire flow for the next couple of months or maybe the entire product line but selection of algorithm is not so easier. Now if it is like something like regressor or classification algorithm that's okay everybody can does that like whether I have to select a regressor algorithm or a classifier algorithm but inside the classifier and regressor we have a lot of options that we can go through and selecting that one particular algorithm there is no such rule that you have to always go through with that it's it's a science and the reason we call it as a data science because science needs to research and we need to explore all things all the time and that brings us to this very big problem which is selection of algorithm. I'm pretty sure as we are going to be working in the future with more data, more blogs will be published, more books will be published and probably in the future uh, we might have certain set of rules like if these rules apply to this data then you can select this algorithm or not. Uh, but again that's just a prediction and that's just a good feeling that I'm getting about this. But again as of now the selection of algorithm is a pretty big decision. So that is why I say to everybody who is getting started in data science and machine learning is try to understand these algorithms as much as possible, um, not from the coding perspective but also from uh, the mathematical perspective as well. They are pretty easy to understand but once you understand you can actually figure it out that yes this algorithm is good for my data or not. So these are my personal five challenges list uh, that I think is good. For everybody to know about. Now in case you are facing challenges in learning data science and machine learning, I'll leave a link in the description below. It's an amazing course. It took me a lot of time to compile this course and to make sure that I make machine learning the easiest as possible and I can make sure that you understand the things each and every bit. So go ahead, take a look and enjoy some of the free previews in the course inside. And that's it for this video. In case you have enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends so that you can spread a little bit knowledge with them. And also in case you are enjoying this channel, this channel is all about programming tech and geeky stuff. So go ahead, hit that subscribe button and I'm gonna surely catch you up in the next video. Breaking.